In this video, we are going to look at a few coordination compounds and try naming them based on the rules that we have just studied. So here is the first coordination compound. And the first rule is that we name the cation before the anion. Now in this particular compound, which is the cationic and the anionic part? The coordination entity is the cationic part and the counter N is the anionic part. So obviously chloride part would be at the end of the name. Okay, so let's see how to name this particular coordination entity. Now within a coordination entity, we will first have to name the ligands. And how many ligands do we have? We have two ligands, ammonia and carbonate. So when it comes to ligands, we know that we have to name them alphabetically, right? Now ammonia is a neutral ligand and its name is amine and CO3 is an anionic ligand and its name is carbonate. But since it's an anionic ligand, we know that the name should end with an O, right? So it will be carbonato. Now which among them will take precedence? Well alphabetically ammonia will come before carbonate. And how many ammonia ligands are there? we have 5. So the prefix for that would be penta. And how many carbonate ligands are there? Just one. So that would be carbonato. So within the coordination entity, if I simply look at the naming of the ligands, it would be penta amine carbonato. So this is the ligand part. Perfect. Now after the ligand, we need to go to the metal right now since it is a cationic complex the name of the metal would be same as the metal itself that is unlike the anionic complex where the name of the metal ends with an 8 we have no complications in the cationic complex so the name of the metal would be cobalt correct if it was an anionic complex it would be cobaltate and what's the next thing that we need to do we need to write the oxidation state of the metal right so for that, if you assume that X is the oxidation state of cobalt and you have neutral ammonia, so it would be zero, carbonate is minus two and chlorine is minus one. Overall charge is zero. So that would give X is equal to plus three. So therefore, the oxidation state of cobalt is three. Now remember, there is absolutely no spacing to be given between the ligand and the metal ion, right? So here is the metal. So no space to be given between these two. So this is the entire cationic part. And now we need to come to the anion, which is the chloride ion. So that is pretty straightforward. It would be chloride. So the final name of this particular compound is pentaamine carbonato cobalt chloride. So let's look at one more compound. So here is the second compound. So let's try naming this. Okay. Here again, the first rule is to name the cation and then the anionic part. Here again, the coordination entity is the positively charged part and the counter ion chloride ion is a negatively charged part. So what do we need to do? We have to name the cation first, which means we have to look at the coordination entity first. And within the coordination entity, we know that we need to look at the ligands first and then the central metal atom. Okay, so let's look at the ligands. How many ligands do we have here? We have three ligands. Two, ammonia, which means we have amine. One, Cl, which is an anionic ligand. That means the name would end with chlorido. Correct? because we will add an O at the end of anionic ligands. And now again we have NH2CH3, which is neutral again. So this is nothing but methanamine. So these are the three ligands that we have. And which one would take precedence? Well, that would depend on the alphabetical order, right? So first comes ammonia, then comes chlorine, and then comes methane amine. So this is the order in which we'll have to name the ligands. Now, how many ammonia ligands are there? Two. So the prefix we add would be diamine. How many chloride ions? Just one. And again, only one methane amine group. So let me write the name here. That would be diamine. Next one is chlorido. 
so chloride and methane amine would be written in brackets methane amine okay so we are done with the ligands part and now we need to look at the central metal right since it is a positively charged complex the name of the metal would be exactly same as a metal itself so that is platinum if it is an anionic complex the name would be platinate correct now what is the oxidation state here so let's quickly look at the oxidation state x plus 2 into 0 plus minus 1 of chlorine again plus 0 plus minus 1 of chlorine and total charge is 0 so x would be plus 2 that means the oxidation state of platinum is 2 so this is the cationic part so we are done with the cationic part and finally we need to name the anionic part which is very simple which is chlorine and we need to leave a space between the anionic and the cationic part so let me move it here chloride so the name of this particular compound is diamine chlorido methanamine platinum to chloride all right let's look at another simple coordination compound so let's first try to identify the cation and then the anionic part now interestingly in this case our counter ion is positively charged and our coordination entity is negatively charged okay since we name the cation first we can write the name of the cation directly here which is now we need to look at the anion and anion is a coordination entity so first we will begin by naming potassium the ligand and then the central metal atom so the ligand is chlorine and we know that since chlorine is a negatively charged ligand or an anionic ligand the name has to end with O so that would be chlorido we have only one type of ligand here which is chloride group and how many are there we have four so this would be tetra chlorido simple right now let's look at the central metal when it comes to the central metal we know that the central metal atom here is in an anionic complex in such cases the name of the metal atom would end with an 8 if it was in a positively charged complex then the name would be copper but since it is in a negatively charged coordination entity the name would be cuprate in the next step we need to write the oxidation state of copper so what is the oxidation state here okay let's quickly calculate that that is 2 into plus 1 of potassium and let x be the oxidation state of copper and you have 4 into minus 1 of chlorine group and overall charge is 0 so that means x is nothing but plus 2 so copper here has plus 2 oxidation state a very simple example right so the final name would be potassium tetrachlorido cuprate 2.